Well, greetings, everybody, and welcome to Creative Goo, the Thursday night uh, creative session here where we talk about all the creativity involved in the gaming, uh, tabletop gaming industry. And this is the Gooey Cube channel, and uh, they're the sponsors of this wonderful hour we spend on uh, Thursday nights. And I hope you guys are excited as I am. And uh, uh, I'm Harry, if you didn't already know, and I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, sculpting again today, and we're going to focus on working cloth in uh, digital clay, and uh, I'll cover that in a minute. You can find my sculpts and uh, purchase STL files if you're interested on my mini factory under uh, Harry Coit or Harry's 3D Sculpting. I'm on Facebook as Harry's 3D Sculpting if you want to follow me there and I post at least once a week, either projects I'm working on, cool stuff like that. And uh, my miniatures are also available on the GUI Cube website uh, as a physical product where you get a resin miniature shipped to you um, if you buy it there and don't have your own 3D printer. Uh, anyway, uh, excited to have you here this evening with me. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and get started and talk about, uh, again, sculpting in a digital form and how you're going to handle sculpting things like cloth and wrinkles and drapes, drapery and things like that. So the first thing to remember is in the digital world, while it may uh, perform a little bit like clay, you're dealing with pixels and with um, polygons and things like that. And so the tool you have will really define the techniques that you're going to use. This is definitely not the box modeling kind of work. You're actually working um, in more of a sculpting, which is one of the reasons I do enjoy it more than I do the box modeling. I'm not a hard surface modeler so much. But uh, let me walk you through that a little bit and show you that I use references. And so the first thing um, let's do is shift the screen here. And uh, I'm going to be uh, showing you guys ZBrush, which is the tool I use, but these techniques are going to work in other sculpting tools uh, like Blender. So they may not have the exact tool or it may not have the same name, but the techniques are going to be very transferable. Uh, maybe later in the year I might play with Blender a little bit with you guys and see how to sculpt in Blender just to show you that the skills are transferable. But right now I do like to stick with what I know just so I can show you guys what I do and talk through the techniques. Um, if there's other things you guys are interested in, make sure you let us know um, in the uh, GUI Facebook pages or here on uh, Twitch, or if you watch on YouTube, you know, add comments to let us know what you might be interested in. So let me uh, take a look uh, through these references. So I'm going to switch to another uh, tool and show you I grabbed some references off the internet. Um, let me zoom in and show you some stuff first. So um, I'm going to be looking at boots. Um, you saw the boot on the ZBrush screen, and I want to show you that too. So I have a couple of boot references. I'm also interested in um, a wizard hat. So you can see I grabbed one, and there's some wrinkles and things that we need to deal with. Um, how pants change when you bend the leg versus when it's straight, but also the compression wrinkles for just wearing clothes. Um, you can see in this shirt, let's try and get this zoomed in really nice. You can see that there's these wrinkles right where it bends normally, but around the wrists, around his waist, and even some all the way up the sleeve, and even a little bit around his neck. So. For a realist, even if you're a stylized sculptor like me, you add realism if you show some of these wrinkles. And then the other one I wanted to look at is uh, she's wearing jeans, and you can see even though she the cloth is tight, there are wrinkles that form in cloth. And so you can see around her knees, especially both front and back, there's wrinkles, and then even up top around her hips. So the more you can incorporate that in your work, the more real it's going to look. And even in, I wish I could get this to, to zoom the way I want it to, 
but even the pants here that are I, I was most interested in the boot but even that um loose pants has a lot of wrinkles that are really really cool so those are some references that i grabbed just to give you an idea of what you would think about as you're working so um, the other thing about this one boot you can see the wrinkles around the edge another common place to see wrinkles is where your toes bend um, the leather even the cloth is going to get um, memory wrinkles for want of a better word these boots don't show that um, but these boots here do the other thing that's interesting is there's this lace up the side of the boot and then there's wrinkles that go across that lace up section and that could be really interesting to sculpt so references are very powerful for when you're working and when you're trying to decide how you want to handle the object so i'm going to jump back to zbrush and you can see here i've got this boot hey chev hunter nice to see you if you have i'm watching chat so if you have questions about sculpting or about what I'm doing, or even just about other things that involve gaming, just feel free to drop it in chat and I'll answer as I go. But uh, welcome to the channel and welcome to the stream. Love to have you here. So I've got this boot. And again, I'm not showing every single technique in every episode. I'm going to be focused on how I might capture some of those wrinkles in this um, boot here. And uh, it's just a single boot. But you can see as I move, there's the sculpt itself. Let's see if I can get it to do it. You can see these looping lines. Uh, that's called the edge or the edge flow that kind of wrap around the boot. And that's going to affect my wrinkles. And I'll show you that as I sculpt, even though I have 128,000 uh, points that I can work in. Um, and so I'll show, talk about how to deal with that too. But I just wanted to show that really quick because you can even see zoomed in here that there are these sculpting lines that are already part of this boot. And we'll, we'll see how much that affects what I'm doing. There's two tools I'm going to start with. They're just the standard basic brushes in ZBrush. One's called Damien Standard where it cuts into the digital clay or you can reverse that and pull out a very sharp line. And the other is called inflate, where it just inflates like a balloon where you place your stylus. And I'm going to start on the side of the boot. And if we go back to that image, you get these wrinkles that form where the leather pulls out and pushes in, and the inflate brush is going to do a really nice job of capturing that. So let's first make sure... I'm scaled correctly. Let's get some brush size and I'm going to inflate. So I can just pull across the side of this boot and you can see it really easily inflates this clay and creates this really nice um, compression wrinkle. I, mean, I really like that. It looks really good automatically and that's one of the things I like about this brush. And then if I reverse it, I can push in on both sides and now it looks a lot like that real leather and you get really nice views. Now I've talked about in other videos where you can have symmetry where what you do on one side of the boot would be replicated on the other. Wrinkles is not a place to use symmetry. You want the, the material just doesn't, the real world doesn't work that way when it comes to wrinkles and things like that. So on the opposite side, I'm going to want to put, you know, maybe this inflated line in a different place and when i do that push in i want to push that in in a different place the other thing about wrinkles even though you might see a curve most of them are going to be very very straight so if i show you in real life there's a little bit of curve here in the leather but for the most part these wrinkles go in straight lines and uh, we want to capture that here in our fantasy boot and so I'm going to inflate up here. Um, that looks really realistic where there's different angles of these um, wrinkles, right? And then I'll, I'll push in a little bit and then I'll pull out. The other thing I noticed on one of them is there was kind of a mini wrinkle. Let me even let 
and shrink the size of my brush and, and uh, pull this out. And I can smooth it too, but I've got this really nice uh, return on there. And that looks really nice. And then I can do similar work on the other side. Let me increase the size of the brush again and do a little work here, do a little here. And you want to think about the leather too. Around the heel is probably reinforced. It may not be quite as um, strong of a wrinkle around the heel itself. It's going to be where the leather is potentially more loose around the person's body. Let me shrink my brushes a little too big. And around the back, I can create, you know, some nice wrinkles. Let's push in a little bit here and add a little interest here. And in our reference, we saw that this was soft leather. Now, if you're doing like a combat boot, there's not going to be quite so many wrinkles, right? This is soft leather, so it's compressing. There's lots of wrinkles. It's part of the design of this particular uh, boot that we're working on. Right? We want it to be soft leather looking, um, but a combat boot, we wouldn't necessarily want that. right? And you notice in the front, I haven't put any wrinkles. So let's carry through some of these wrinkles and see how that goes. Maybe that's a little too much. All right, so that I think is good enough for the side of this leather boot, and it looks pretty real. Now, the other place we talked about was the uh, where the toe bends in this boot, and is it going to create wrinkles? And I'm going to use a different tool. I mentioned it before. Um, it was designed by a guy named Damien in ZBrush. We call it the Dam Standard Brush, and it just cuts in. Well, as I talked about, the geometry of this particular boot makes that look really weird, right? So I could try and change that. Let me undo those. There's a couple things I can do. I can increase the amount of geometry on the boot. So let me do that and see if that helps. That helps a little bit. The other thing I can do is re-topologize. So it actually removes that curve. And I'm going to do that because I'm not liking how that looks. That looks really bad. Um, so let's go back. Um, I like those side wrinkles. So I'm going to duplicate this particular boot so I don't destroy what the work I've already done. And I'm going to retopologize. And what that does is the software is going to analyze the, it's called a mesh, this, this set of polygons, and then reorganize them and uh, try and create smoother lines. Uh, and uh, so I'm going to keep it the same number of polygons, or at least that's my target, and see how we get. Um, every software I've worked with um, does have the ability to do this retopologize to change where the points are and everything. So it's not unique to ZBrush. So you should be able to find a similar tool in whatever you're working with. And uh, it is not liking it. And I don't want my system to blow up. So I'm going to do it with a different tool. And just to keep this going. So um, I'm using what's called DynaMesh, which is unique to, that is unique to, the software and what it's done is evenly spread all of the polygons across the entire surface so instead of having those um, loops those edge loops everything's just um, an evenly distributed group of squares so um, I have a pretty good count and now if I run I, I get a very straight line with that Damien standard brush so you can see the difference in what I did. Now, I don't want completely straight lines because this is going to wrinkle as I bend, right? So let's do a little bit different here. And then another one like 
this. Then I've got a pretty good, this is actually a relatively good view of what happens when you bend that toe. And then what I can do is smooth that a little bit so it's not quite so sharp because of the brush I'm using, right? So, and I want some of that to go all the way underneath where I have the sole that I've already made. Um, what I may do in the future is show the sole of the boot and how I made it. But for right now, I'm focused on this, the, the wrinkles and how you would capture those. Now, again, with Damien Standard, I can uh, reverse the brush and I can create these sharp lines. This isn't really a, a, a material that creates those sharp lines. So I have a pretty solid boot, pretty happy with it. Um, what I'm going to do is uh, copy it to another project just so I can show you what we would do next. And so I'm going to I might explain what I just did in another video, but for now I just grabbed this boot and I have this character with a shirt and a pair of pants and let's add the boot that I just made and move it to change its size. And he's now got a pair, a boot. Doesn't have a pair right now. He just has a boot. But it looks good. It's, um, again, I'm a stylized sculptor, so I don't need it to be hyper-realistic. But that actually looks pretty nice. Let's move it just a little bit so you don't see his toes. Oops. There we go. He's got boot, and I can actually mirror that across both feet. So now I've got boots. So the other thing that we wanted to talk about today is what about the clothes? And so I've already put on a, a long sleeve shirt on him and a pair of pants so that we can look at making um, those wrinkles, those different kind of wrinkles where they would show up on the body, on his clothes. And uh, again, oh, let me go to the pants first. That'll be pretty straightforward. And right now they're very low polygon. It's only 900 points, about uh, uh, two or 3,000. No, not even that. It's going to be 1,000 or 2,000 squares or rectangles on this thing. So the wrinkles aren't going to really show. Um, that's just too low of a resolution. So I'm going to go ahead and divide that up. And you notice it's smooth already. Um, let me go to about 200,000 points. All right, so now he's got these pants and they can be anything we want. And um, one of the things I can do if I just solo is I can give him seams, right? So we noticed that one boot had laces on the side. Well, pants are often seamed on the side. And I have um, one way to do that is use that same damn standard brush. Let's make it smaller. Let's make sure it's all the sizes that I want. And I'm just going to create a seam on the pants. And this is where I use that sharp line where I reverse the damn standard brush. And there's no, I haven't built threads for the seams for this particular demo. But I have brushes that can do that where you can actually generate um, threads you know, and generate stitches and you can generate all those kinds of things. So, um, let me try, I'm just going to pull this seam together with a specialized brush called Met Cut. And what it does is it's just pulling it together. Um, but I just wanted to have some seams. You could do seams on the inside too, depending on the kind of pants you want to do, but let's talk about the wrinkles. So where you see wrinkles the most, is if he's if the pants bunch up around the top of the boots where the legs bend so at the back of the knee especially but a little bit in the front of the knee and then on the hips and um, where there's there's gathers right and so again um, you I can use the inflate brush um, 
with the right size. And I can just create some, just some of those compression wrinkles where the cloth just bunches up because that's where there's a lot of motion for this person. And uh, with a few strokes, you know, that looks already more real. And then I can do this on the side and I can uh, add some interest there too. And you don't need a lot when you're working like this, because remember, this is designed to be a miniature. Um, that's what I do anyway. So I'm not looking to make a video game or anything. I, I do this for miniatures, for tabletop gaming. And so they're generally an inch tall. And so an inch tall miniature, you want to have some interest and some, some sense of reality, you know, even though it's stylized. So, you know, something like that's giving us pretty solid look. Now the back of the legs and stuff is a different kind of wrinkle. And so I'm going to go back to that other brush where I'm cutting in. And because the, the, the wrinkles are much, much tighter where it bunches up when you bend your leg. Right. And then I'm going to do that a little bit here too, um, around his, uh, his behind. Right. And then the other thing that happens is I'm going to solo this. So all you see is the pants is where this seam is. You can get wrinkles here, and I'm gonna use the damn standard just to get some pinch points because there's, it's a seam, right? And so this is where, you know, there's gonna be some uh, action, some compression, things like that. And uh, I'm just gonna grab a hint. Now, I am cheating in this particular case. I told you not to use symmetry. And everything I do right now is mirrored on both sides. And that's just so I can move faster for demonstration purposes. Normally, you wouldn't be doing that. You'd make them different on both sides. Now, I can turn off symmetry just so I can do that. I can start with the uh, wrinkles being the same. Um, and then I can tone it down on one side and uh, increase on the other. Now it's no longer symmetrical, right? So I actually have some more realistic results because of that, right? So doing pretty good here. So let's uh, smooth this out a little bit, smooth this out a little bit different way. And even the back now isn't symmetrical but i'm going to turn it back on as i work on the seam now um, i don't have a reference for the seams of how those pull and gather and all that stuff so i'm just doing it right now for interest um, um, you could do it different ways uh, references are best but for this purpose i want to just show you that I now have this guy with pretty nice looking pair of pants that um, I'd be happy with to go forward and use. Now we have his shirt. And again, I have a reference for the shirt. Let me zoom out and focus just on that shirt. So there's a little bit different thing going on here where the the wrinkles are so big they overlap each other and so that you want to treat that a little bit differently and if i go back here again i'm going to add some uh, um, polygons so it's not so small um, there's some things i would do different if i was going to actually print this up but i'll cover that in another lesson i want to focus on the wrinkles and we'll get to drapes and drapery here in a few minutes. Um, so let me go ahead and add some polygons. So you can see it's now a lot smoother, which is what we want. And we want that those, I'm gonna focus on the uh, area here where um, you got that really, really cool look where the wrinkles overlapped a bit so let me add kind of a wrinkle across the whole thing 
where the fabric's just big. And then we can, you know, do the push in, kind of the opposite of inflate. You're deflating, basically. And that's actually pretty close to what we had on the other, on the reference, right? So, but now what we want to do is I'd use the move brush. And all that does is move polygons around. And I want to move it very small movements at first so it really gets that illusion that it's overlapping right you can also increase the size of the brush and just get really big movements too that's probably too many there we go so that looks really good um and then if we go back some of the other things we saw you're getting some of the wrinkles that we would see if he was really wearing this shirt, right? You're getting pretty good realism. Now, the other place uh, on this particular one is there's these wrinkles around the outside and then these long ones across his body. And those are a lot of fun when you're sculpting. Even though you, you don't have a design on this shirt, you're getting, whoa, you don't want that. Let me turn off symmetry and go back to inflate. And we've got this other little guy. And we have some inside. Right? So we want to get some of those big strokes. And I'll push in so it's more dramatic. smooth so you don't see those extra divots that's not what we want right and then if i use that other brush i can get the smaller sharper motions right there we go now if we look at the whole guy it's pretty nice, and you can see because of the way I did it, the symmetry is pulling us out of um, the realism. Maybe you could say he's got armbands or something that forces that look, but what you'd really want to do now that we're not in symmetry is change it so that they don't look the same. And I'd spend more time on that, you know, if we weren't in this demo. Right. So that looks better. Now, remember, this is a 3D object, so I've been focusing on the front. If we turn it around to the other side, the shirt has no wrinkles, right? So you do want to be turning it and seeing how the wrinkles look at different angles, because that's going to matter if you make this a physical object. Um, but even as it is now, I'm pretty happy with it. And that's just using three brushes. The inflate, like a balloon brush. The move, as you're just moving things around. And then that sharp cut-in brush called, we call it the Damien standard brush. But this damn standard brush where it just cuts in a little bit or pushes in. And then you can also create a sharp line if you reverse it. It's one of the nice things about ZBrush is you can reverse every brush. So if it put, if one motions push in, you reverse it, it'll pull out. If one is to inflate and the opposite would be to deflate. So um, basically every brush is two brushes. So I have this. 
Um, so the next thing that you deal with cloth is not just the wrinkles that form, like these compression wrinkles, but how it might drape. Um, I do have some reference images of really fancy outfits. And let's see if I can pull one up and show you. I'll give me one minute. I didn't have it ready. I apologize. I'll do this one. So I have a collection of these really fancy fantasy outfits um, that uh, I downloaded. You know, I you know will do some similar design. But so when I talk about draping, it's the bottom of this dress drapes as it hangs to the ground. And then you can see her sleeves at the elbow drape as they hang down, but they're held at the top of her arms. So it creates a different kind of drapery look than straight down. Cloth wants to pull straight based on gravity, right? So this is what I mean by draping. And there's some simple techniques to do that. And then there's some advanced techniques within zebras to allow you to do that. But I just wanted to show you the example of draping. I'm not going to use that reference. I'm trying to keep it simple for this particular demonstration. But what I'm going to do is just insert a cylinder, right? So we've got this cylinder. I'm actually going to do some couple of things just to, uh, I'm making it hollow, right? So it's just outside. Then I need to make it closer to his size. Right. So now he's wearing it and, um, it, it's not going to be a perfect cylinder, so we're going to narrow it down. You can see I'm trying to fit it to his body a bit. Another thing I can do nicely with ZBrush is taper. So I'm going to taper the top because he's wearing it. And I'm going to do that with the tool that they provide. And that's pretty good. So now I have to figure out, now that I have this kilt or skirt or whatever it is, bottom of his shirt, let me turn on symmetry for some of the additional adjustments. So I want to move in on his hips so it does look more like he's wearing it. Maybe move out across his behind because th the cloth would pull in that direction. Just smooth it a little bit. All right, and, but it still doesn't look quite right because there's no draping wrinkles, right? And um, if I look at the uh, topology, you can see there's lines going down, which is perfect, but there's a lot of lines going across. So if I try and use, I'm gonna keep it low resolution, um, turn off that. And so if I use the damn standard, it actually works pretty well, because what it's doing, there's only a few polygons it can interact so I can just take advantage of it being low poly, right? And create some of these draping or pleats, if you will, um, all those different um, ways you're going to be dealing with how it drapes. So the first is just to create that. And I'm gonna use the inflate brush to give me some more um, room in each of those. All right, so that's actually not bad. And so if I solo that, you can see I have the way the fabric is hanging is gonna be a little bit like pleats. Now, if you want it to be exactly like pleats, you can do that too, but I just wanna make it look like it's draping. And again, symmetry is making it look like pleats. If I turn off the symmetry and have it different on both sides, it'll look more like how the fabric is just draping. So I'm going to do that real quick and show you what I mean. So if I pull, let me change to the move brush and I'm just going to pull this side down a little bit. All right. And then I'm going to go back to inflate and just inflate this part all right, and maybe smooth it. And maybe get rid of this in the middle. There we go. 
and then a few on the side. Um, I think that's pretty good. Let me move again. Now, because it's no longer symmetrical, I'm getting a more net feel, more of a feeling that this is how the cloth is just falling, right? So I want to add um, geometry so it smooths out. Now you can really see that it's more like how it's draping. And now I'm going to be focusing on those same brushes. Let me deflate this side here a little bit. And here. Here. Right. And then I'm going to use the move brush to get me some of what I want. The other thing you can do with the move brush is let's say I want some of it to hold tighter to this body and other parts to pull away. And you can do that with the move brush solely and just getting exactly the look you want. And remember, I'm, I'm changing the angle because cloth wants to hang straight down. It'll conform to your body when it has to, but it is it, it doesn't want to. It wants to hang straight. And so on his back, what you would have is it's pulled up around his waist. It goes stretches out over his hips and his behind. And then it tries to hang straight. Now, some fabrics will pull in a little bit, but you want to keep that in mind that it doesn't stick out at angles. It's going to want to hang straight as much as it can after it's forced out. So the side, most realistically, unless it, um, you're forcing it to hang in a different way, right? So now I've draped is kilt without pleats and so that looks really really good now again none of this is printable because there's there's only one side so i have to do things differently if i actually want this to be a printable model but it shows you the draping and you can do this technique for different kinds of things so i'm going to show you something you get if you own zbrush because it's really cool. Um, so I'm going to again create a hollow cylinder because it works best this way. So again, it's hollow. And I'm going to create what's called dynamic um, subdivision so it's giving me a smoother look but it's non-destructive it hasn't actually done it so it's a feature within the software and because i'm using that feature i can also give it thickness so it's no longer hollow and i'm gonna make it a little bit thicker and then i can there's these cloth simulations that are available in the software so if i do this you can see it's creating that cloth drape look and then I'm going to taper it I like that a lot and I stop using drape and just put it around his waist maybe make it a little narrower smaller so he's got this over skirt and now that I have the basic uh, draping wrinkles which look really good already I can then manipulate it like I would before with my move brush and you can even move cloth where it's going to react like cloth but uh, I'm just um, cheating so I can go a little faster and uh, just one of the I just love ZBrush because they keep adding these features that allow me to work faster and get the effects I want, you know, uh, and so I can focus on the art and the creativity and not on the um, technology or, or anything like that. So I need to make it bigger.
So I need to play some more if I was going to do that on uh, making sure you see the whole fabric because some of it's in, pulled in a little too much. Um, but it looks really cool already. Um, and so now I have, like I could use that technique to make the bottom of this dress. Look how fast I would have been able to do that um, with that uh, cloth dynamics and the other feature. So I've got this, in fact, let me move it down. <laughs> so it's an underskirt, not an overskirt. And uh, tilt it a little bit, that's kind of crazy. So underneath his kilt, he's got this uh, underskirt he's wearing. He's a uh, paladin and he's got a tabard over his robe. So that's draping and how you can do draping in ZBrush, right? And, you know, I've been working on this guy. He, you know, he, without the, if I hide those two items, you know, this guy could li live in the modern world. Hey, Geeky, how's it going? Um, I'm just, uh, at, you know, adding wrinkles and cloth and drapes to a figure. Um, have any questions, let me know. So you can see this guy could live in the modern world. He doesn't have to be, or even in a sci-fi world. I mean, his boots even have um, a, a pattern on them. So they would even be, you know, you could use them as modern boots. Um, I generally sculpt and work in the realm of fantasy. So I would add things like this and it changes his overall look. But I want to show you a model I did. Um, do I have it handy? I do. So I did this project for Media Stream Press. They have a, a near future world where the uh, heroes are soldiers fighting uh, the demons that have come to the real world. Um, so a little bit cyberpunk, a little bit just uh, postmodern um, with fantasy elements. Like you can see, if I zoom in to talk about this character, he's got magical symbols on his skin that uh, give him magical powers and stuff. So he's a combination and he's got these medallions around his neck. But I wanted to show you the wrinkles and stuff to make his clothes. This is a modern character. Oh. And so I put, you know, the, the compression wrinkles around his arms. The uh, edge of his shirt has wrinkles, uh, you know, where the uh, seams are. Um, I did that around his neck. Um, and that looks pretty good. His vest has some wrinkles in it. It's a more tougher material. So there aren't quite as many wrinkles. Um, uh, even the back of his neck has wrinkles from his skin because his head tilts back. So you want to use some of those techniques and you want to think about obviously the, the texture of the body and then how the clothes wrap around the body. So he's got this tight shirt and then he's got these looser pants. And so there's this uh, seam across his leg with the stitches. And then you have the wrinkles around the back of the knee and at the boot where it catches. And then you can see there's some artifacts here where I tried to do the compression wrinkles around the straps on his leg. But because I had to keep this low poly um, so that it would print well, um, you can see there's some artifacts there in the techniques that I used. Now, this is because I'm zooming in to the model. Now, this is how big the model prints, right? So it looks really good at one inch tall. That's actually bigger than one inch. That looks more like two inches tall. Um, but it gives you an idea of how it might print. So let me show you what he looks like printed and painted. So again, this is zoomed in. He's one inch tall on a base, but here he is painted and you can see the wrinkles around the boot. You can see the wrinkles the boot has as it moves, even though they're combat boots. Um, you can see around his collar and at the um, waistline and on the sleeves, some of the wrinkles, some of the wrinkles in his shoulder. And then if I go from another angle, yeah, there's the back. You can see the back of the knees, 
where the wrinkles show up. And the wrinkles around the straps don't show up a lot, but they're enough that you get a feeling that there's actually straps around his legs that the pants are being pulled by. And then if I go another angle, you can see the wrinkles at the top of his knees um, and then the wrinkles in his shirt around where the vest goes, right? So um, all of these things help. It gives the painter something to work with for highlighting and shading, but it also, you know, showcases the sculpt sculpting as well. Let's go back and see if I can get the back of his neck hard because of the angles, but you can even see the wrinkles on the back of his neck. You can paint and do fun stuff with. Um, I think, yeah, there's another view where just a few wrinkles um, really show up. And so you want to think about the cloth and how it interacts when you put a character in a pose. And uh, again, simple paint job. He's mostly, you know, uh, army green um, with uh, metal components. And I just gave him that purple shirt because he's a street tough and he looks really cool and the metal uh, medallions around his neck to protect him. But this was a lot of fun to create. And you, you know, even if you're making a modern character, you want to add, you know, as much interest as you can. Um, and of course, you know, I did the, the, the guns and the swords and things too, which can be fun, but I really like the sculpting part. So um, this is just a practical example of the draping and the wrinkles and how you do cloth um, when you're sculpting a miniature form because you're not all making superheroes with a skin-tight suit. Um, in fact, you're rarely making superheroes in skin-tight suits because that's not very interesting. Um, and so you have some of this kind of option. So any of you uh, online have any questions about this or... Um, so, you know, anything you want to see or learn about as we talk about cloth and draping and um, other techniques. I really like how the boots turned out. Um, the shirt I'm not as happy with. I don't think I was very successful with those overlapping wrinkles on his um, elbow area. Um, I like the this second skirt better than the first one. Although the first one's good too, depending on what you want that material to be. Uh, if you're working with um, cotton or things like that, lots of flow, lots of flow wrinkles and compression wrinkles where it gathers at the bottom. If you're working with leather, um, unless it's moving a lot like those boots, leather doesn't have as much wrinkles. You're, you're forcing the material to wrinkle when you bend. So you get some really neat looks like you could search for leather jackets and stuff and it looks really, really cool around the elbow, around uh, where you move. Um, and so you have this combination of very um, flat surfaces um, and then the combination of where you have to bend. It creates these um, wrinkles. It also can create cracks. And so the aged leather will actually have cracks in it. So knowing the material makes a difference um, in what you do. And if I go back to the original boot, so I made this boot and we just did the wrinkles today, you can get other effects, right? So I have, this is the leather part of the boot. I've got the sole with the pattern on the bottom. Looks pretty good. Well, what I also created was a steel toe and a steel heel. And with a little adjustment, I have the new brush on. I can get this really cool, realistic leather and the steel toe and the steel heel, and it looks really good. All right, let me get a good angle on this thing and actually render with some shadows so you can get a good look at it. So that looks pretty slick, right? So you see the rivets and everything. So there's a lot you can do between the sculptural aspects like the wrinkles and the shapes and things and the hard surface aspects like the, the rivets and the smooth steel of the toe. So um, combining techniques because of the way the software is designed is pretty straightforward to get both hard surface and um, 
organic into the same project, um, like in this model here. Um, lots of combinations of hard surface, like his clips, the hard leather, patent leather holsters for his pistols, and then the cloth, like his pants and his shirt. And the vest is different because it's, you know, either heavy canvas or leather. And then he's got strap on his wrist. I gave him some technology, like a smartwatch thing that he's got. Um, so you have lots of different combinations of um, sculptural uh, things like that, as well as the hard surface, like his samurai sword. And there's even, you can't see it on the model. Um, and, well, we'll go check. But I even have designs on his, his katana here. Um, that are just too likely too small for most printers. But if we go back to the painted, uh, let's see if I can get a back view and zoom in. Switch to my mouse. Yeah, you don't get any pattern. Um, you just get the pieces of the katana. So not a surprise, but... Uh, you know, this, you know, it still looks really cool. Um, the best miniature I ever created. Um, every miniature I do is better than the one before. I do have favorites, Geeky. Um, I did a Cyclops that was based on the Ray Harryhausen Cyclops from the Seventh Voyage of Sinbad. I love that thing. Not my best um, skill, but it turned out really, really good. Um, this year during the, or this past year during the, um, Star Wars month, I sculpted my version of Ray and I really liked, and I might have a picture of that. Let me look real quick. Oh, I don't have one painted, but I do have it. So I did that. So her staff turned out exactly like her staff. Her pistol is the same laser she had. I, I, I love all of it. The boots, the pants, everything was good. I didn't get her face as much like her as I wanted. Um, likenesses are hard on the best of days, and I just didn't capture it well. But the rest of her just turned out fantastic. And this one's big. I think it's 75 millimeter. Um, and I, I painted it up. It looks really fun. And it was for me. I did enter it in a contest and didn't even come close to winning, but it was a fun project. And so I really liked how that turned out. Um, some of the miniatures I've done for Gooey Cube, there's some really, really good ones. Um, lots of different ones there. But yeah, it's really, um, I've done so many, honestly. It's hard for me to pick. Like, I like how this guy turned out. Um, Let's see if, no, I'm not. Yeah, I don't have um, it handy, but I, I, I did three or four uh, miniatures for Media Stream Press. This is just one of them. Um, and they all turned out really, really good. Um, I recently did a project for Gooey Cube that you'll probably see as part of the Kickstarter, and those came out really good too. And so I'm really happy with uh, the five I did. I'm working on a, on a sixth one for that Kickstarter. So um, that's a great question, and you know, causes me to do a lot of thinking. Um, oh, let me I, let me show you one more thing before we wrap for the day. Most every sculptor likes sculpting um, creatures, right? Because you can just go wild and do fun stuff. And so I've shown this before. Oh, let me close her out. So I sculpted this, my version of a brontosaur, right? And so I've shown this a couple of times. Well, I printed it and painted it, and so this is a painted version. And so between the paint and the sculpt, 
It was a ton of fun. Now, was it particularly complicated? Actually, no. Once you do the face and the head, it's mostly about finding a good texture for its um, almost, it's not really lizard-like skin, but it, there, there's this skin texture, almost like an elephant, really. And, uh, but tons of fun. There was actually some problems with the print. I'm going to do an episode on 3D printing of how to deal with some of the problems you might run into. But this one, he's so big. Um, uh, I want to say he's like 18 inches from tail to head, um, which is really big for a miniature. It's the biggest thing I've ever printed that I built myself or I sculpted myself. Um, I have other relatively large creatures. But that's the thing about, um, oh, I do have a picture. Here's the Cyclops I was talking about that I did based on Ray Harryhausen. So here's the Cyclops. He's pretty tall. He's about 54 millimeters, something like that, about three times the size of a regular character. And I would do it differently now, but he was a ton of fun. Um, the, I, the head was the closest to, to Harryhausen. The, his body, not so much, but um, he was a lot of fun. To sculpt. Great question, Geeky. Thanks. Um, no cloth on the Brontosaur, no cloth on the uh, Cyclops, but they were fun. Um, let me see. I'll pick one more before we wrap. Yeah, these are um, renders, but this these are the two, two of the characters for Media Stream Press, um, a female um, and male for they're, they're hunters. And then I did two um, technical, you know, tech kind of guys, a hacker and a mechanic. And they turned out really good too. So a um, uh, lot of fun in, in trying to capture diversity. So um, the, the woman here, this mechanic is a native, um, you know, she's got feathers in her hair and stuff like that. So uh, uh, Native American concept. And then uh, both of the men are uh, men of color. And then he's got a uh, prosthetic leg and a prosthetic hand, really, but uh, trying to capture some diversity there. And then uh, he's a man of color and she, it's harder to do in miniature. It's mostly about the paint versus the sculpt, but um, she's uh, of Asian descent or Latin descent, depending on how you paint her up. And so trying to get some, diversity in miniatures. And I try and do that a lot. Uh, obviously, if you're doing dwarves, it's more about how you paint them than how you sculpt them. But if you're doing um, human forms, trying to do the hair to be more um, uh, diverse, right? So, you know, adding the, the, the hairstyles and the hair um, and the outfits that they might choose just so that people feel more included and, and represented in the miniatures. So I do a lot of that. Um, I didn't always, but it, certainly in the last few years, that's been part of my style. So I really liked all of those. Um, so yeah, picking a favorite, I've got hundreds of miniatures at this point. So I don't know that I could pick. I did the Scooby-Doo crew. I don't know if I have them here. I call them the mystery solvers. Yeah. So these were quite a while ago. And we're getting close to, I don't, do I have them painted? I don't think I have them painted. Oh, well. They are painted, but I don't have uh, images handy. But this is a render of, I call her Darla. And this is early on. So this was quite a few years ago. So I was just getting my, uh, my sea legs, as it were, from a sculpting perspective in digital format. And then I've got Eddie. And you can see these are very much like the cartoons. So not much. Um, you don't see a lot of wrinkles and things. They're very much like the cartoon. But I didn't do likenesses or faces or mine. Um, but you get the picture when you, especially when they're painted. And then I have a guy called Scooter of the group. He's probably the best. Um, he was a lot of fun. And then um, I have Vera. 
and she's good too. But I think of all of those, I I like Scooter, the name I give them. I like Scooter the best. But I also did a, a, a large dog named Tater. And here's Tater. So very cartoony, um, lots of fun stuff there. So anyway... Great way to wrap up the session, um, talking about these things. I do want to let everybody know next week is, let me do one thing real quick before I talk about next week. All right, so next week is uh, Genghis Khan, and there's an event on Thursday night that I believe is going to be live streamed. Um, it'll definitely be on social media. So I'm not running a creative goo. I'm actually going to be at the convention. Um, so no creative goo next Thursday, but I'll re be returning the following Thursday. So um, certainly uh, want to make sure you uh, keep that in mind and uh, certainly join us for um, all of our fun hijinks uh, on the Twitch stream for the other events we're doing. And as always, Saturday morning is Goo Morning Zate on the same channel. So uh, hope to see some of you at Genghis Khan. And uh, you guys have a great evening. Thanks for joining me on Creative Goo. Take care, everybody.